When it comes to Deathloop, you don't know what you don't know. That's kind of the whole gist of the game. But with a little knowledge and a few tips and tricks, you'll be well on your way to breaking the loop and beating the game. Hey there, friends. It's Kodiak here, one half of the team behind Legacy Gaming. And today, I'm sharing all the things I wish I knew sooner about Arcane Studios' immersive sim, Deathloop. I want to make sure it's crystal clear right off the bat. There will be no story spoilers in this video. While we'll talk about a number of game concepts, we're going to make sure you're still the one discovering the true mysteries of the island, because honestly, that's what the game is all about. If you're anything like me, you had a pretty basic understanding of the game before you decided to pick it up and start playing. I knew all about Residium, the special resource used to infuse your weapons, but I was confused as to why I couldn't pick anything up when I was just starting out. The simple answer is the game puts you on rails right out of the gate, and in an attempt to not overwhelm the player, they don't give you access to everything early on. What I'm getting at is this. Don't spend too much time trying to build your perfect loadout on the first day, because it doesn't matter. I'm not trying to discourage you from exploring, but just know that it's all going to go bye-bye until you reach a certain point in the story when you unlock Infusion. Of course, I'm not going to tell you where or when that's going to happen, because that is a story spoiler, but it is something you need to keep in the back of your head. Maybe it's just me, but when I first got the game, I didn't expect the systems to guide me as much as they did. I had a notebook right next to me, and I was ready to track everything myself. Little did I know, the developers did a great job designing systems to help players keep all the info organized. What became abundantly clear to me was that you can't gather all the information you need in one day. It's impossible. What I found to be incredibly helpful was a focused approach to information gathering. Much like in an MMO, sticking to a plan is important to making progress in the game. You start wandering off the beaten path, you're sure to find something cool, but it may not actually help you push deeper into the game. Using the leads and discovery systems, you can track certain ideas, even if they're smaller puzzles you've stumbled across. Keep an eye on the time of day. Those things are relevant, and use the markers to help you make decisions about what to do. Those carry over into the menus between missions, too, so if you're tracking something, the game will tell you what time of day and what region you need to explore. It's a smart way to help guide players without outright forcing them to make decisions, but it's incredibly useful if you're someone like me that gets easily distracted. When it comes to guns, you're gonna want to experiment, and once you get infusion, the process of building your arsenal becomes that much easier. Once you infuse a weapon, it'll come back each and every loop. That means you can drop the weapon during a run, pick up something else you want to try out, and the next time you wake up on the beach, the first gun that you dropped will be back in your inventory. It took me a hot minute to realize this, but once I did, I started building out my inventory to include weapons of all shapes and sizes. Because you can change weapons between missions, you're giving yourself options, and once you reach a certain point in the game, you'll just know what types of weapons to bring into what maps, and you'll have a deep pool of guns to choose from, and that's really great. Just remember you need to infuse anything you want to carry over, including trinkets, so if you infuse a gun but don't infuse the trinkets, only the gun will carry over. Speaking of guns, let's talk about our friends, the Visionaries. They're all packing, and the weapons they carry are really top tier. If you're someone that prefers to fight rather than sneak around, you may want to beeline it right for one of the Visionaries that has a weapon type that you like. As a quick guide, Charlie drops a Strelak 50-50 shotgun that slows enemies on hit, Igor drops a rapier rifle that has a tighter zoom picture, Alexis drops a pair of Limp 10 submachine guns with life leech, Thea drops an MG1 Peppermill machine gun that applies a bleed effect when damaging enemies, Harriet drops a 4-pounder pistol that releases a toxic cloud on hit, and Frank drops a legendary pistol, the Constancy Automatic, an interesting weapon where the last few bullets deal extra damage, and, because of its two magazines, allows you to keep firing while reloading. You can go after any of these visionaries, as long as you know where they're going to be and what time of day they're going to be there. It should be relatively straightforward once you progress a little bit into the game, and now that you know what weapons they each have, you can plan your attack. Maybe going loud isn't for you, and in that case, you'll need a weapon that's a bit more subtle. There's really only two options in the game, a spiker, that's the modified nail gun capable of taking out enemies without alerting others, or a special limp 10 that's silenced. If you're looking for a spiker, might I recommend you check out the library in Updom in the morning. Inside, you'll find a number of weapon cases, each containing some pretty awesome weapons. 
Disable the security, dispatch any Eternalist in your way, and you'll be able to claim one of the strongest silenced weapons in the game pretty early on. This variation does increase damage to targets that are marked, so make sure you're tagging enemies before you pull the trigger. I also want to make sure people realize that you can hold down the trigger when using a spiker and build up a powerful charge. I didn't realize this right out of the gate, but it's essential for sniping enemies that are any sort of distance away. The second weapon, the Silenced Limp 10, can be found in Igor's lab at the complex. Make sure to hack both of the security turrets before entering inside, and then just sitting there waiting to be picked up is the gun. This isn't a lights out weapon, the Limp 10 is actually kinda weak, but it's great if you end up getting spotted and need to take out an enemy quickly, but still quietly. Let's shift gears and talk about slabs. Just like the weapons, visionaries also drop slabs when they're killed, and if there's one slab you absolutely need to pick up, it's shift. This is an old staple of the Dishonored games, and the ability is still as good as ever. It's a teleport that allows you to explore the world in completely new ways. It's also handy for getting away from a fight if you're outnumbered, and it's absolutely essential for progression in the game. Could you use other combinations? Sure, that's up to you, but if you want a truly game-changing ability, it's Shift. To acquire Shift, you need to kill Charlie Montague. He's the visionary in Updom that's locked himself inside a real-life video game. You can kill him off the old-fashioned way, sneaking through the complex, but here's a trick. If you want to knock him off quickly, head to this building here and enter the window. Keep moving through and climb the stairs to the top floor of the building and a location called the Sniper's Nest. Dispatch the three Eternalists inside and you'll have the place all to yourself. With the right gun and a little patience, you can kill Charlie from here with one pull of the trigger. You just need to time your shot. That being said, you still need to reach him to pick up the slab, so while you are getting part of the job done, there's still an army of Eternalists in your way. Don't forget, once you pick up Shift, the work's not over. You have to infuse it so you don't lose it every loop, and you can come back and kill Charlie multiple times to upgrade the Shift slab even more. Since we're talking about slabs, I want to quickly point out that you have to upgrade slabs the same way you upgrade weapons. When you kill a visionary multiple times, you'll unlock augmentations that make those slabs even better. But I didn't realize I had to socket those upgrades, just like trinkets for weapons. I went a few loops before I realized my slabs weren't their upgraded forms, and sure enough, when I went into the loadout menu, I realized each had two slots that I could socket the upgrades. I'm sure a lot of people have already caught on to this, but with so much information flying at players, I wanted to make sure no one else fell into the same trap that I did. One thing that I really embraced during my time with Deathloop was stealth, and I'm not usually the stealth type. I love climbing across rooftops and taking out enemies without anyone the wiser. One thing I picked up on pretty quick was how to hack turrets and cameras the most effective way, and I wanted to share that with you all. It's really quite simple. Make sure you start the hack in line of sight of the target, and then move behind cover while the hack is in progress. As long as you're still holding down the hack button, even if you're out of range, the hack will continue, and you can take these security defenses out of the picture without exposing yourself. You might also be interested to know that there are batteries at the base of turrets that you can steal, disabling them, and giving you the battery so that you can use it for other things. Field nullifiers are also powered by batteries, but those are pretty rare in the game, but still, it's nice to know. The quickest way to die in Deathloop is by alerting a scout. Which Eternalists are scouts, you ask? Well, if you mark your targets, you'll notice scouts have these little pulsating waves coming off their icons. That lets you know they have access to radios. Those radios can be used to call in everyone, and I do mean everyone, so you either need to avoid them or kill them before they can call in reinforcements. This was a bigger deal earlier on, but you have one or two run-ins with scouts, and you'll learn pretty quickly that they're not to be trifled with. My final tip today has to do with the delivery booths you've probably run across in the game. These things are awesome, but you have to unlock them to get the benefits. There's one delivery booth on each map, and once you find the code, you can use any of them to drop yourself specific items – crank wheels, batteries, field nullifiers, and turrets. Not bad. To get the code, head to Fristad Rock. Once you zone in, turn right and head behind the giant billboard structure. Move up the cliffside until you reach the listening post, but be careful. Depending on what time of the day you do this, there will be tons of Eternalists and a number of landmines, so watch your step. Move to the other side of the listening post and head down the hill. There's a gathering of Eternalists here, so take them out or sneak behind them and enter Fia's bunker. You don't have to go too far. Go to the back right of this first room and look through the window to the whiteboard. You're going to see a code in the bottom left-hand corner. That's what you need to unlock the booths. Codes in Deathloop are randomized per player, so what you see on the screen here isn't going to be the same code that you need. 
Once you do get your code, you can go unlock any of the delivery booths in the game, so feel free to call yourself in some supplies when you're in a pinch. And there you have it, all the things I wish I knew sooner about Arcane Studios' Death Loop. Of course, there is so much more we couldn't get into for this video, so if you have a tip or trick you'd like to share with the community, do me a solid and put it in the comment section below. We're all about sharing knowledge here on the channel, and I'm sure others would appreciate the help. Of course, if you like this video and you want to help out the channel, you know what to do. Hit that thumbs up and subscribe. It's still the single best way to help channels like Legacy Gaming reach new audiences. We also invite you to join us on Discord. We've got a great group of around 7,000 members, so if you like games and you want to hang out with our community, check out the link in the description and join today. Finally, if you like everything we stand for here at Legacy Gaming and you want to help us out even more, you can now do so by becoming a member. For just a couple bucks, you're helping evolve the channel and take our community to that next level. Check out the join button below to learn more. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching and play on.